Welcome to this, our latest edition of Zoom with ZOA. Our program today, entitled Gaza After the War, features two esteemed guests from the Nahua Settlement Movement, Daniela Weiss and Lital Slonim. Today's program will begin, will begin with a presentation and time permitting Q&A. All microphones will be muted for the duration of the webinar and questions for our guests should be posted in the Zoom Q&A feature, which you'll see visible in the middle bottom of your screen. We may use the chat to send messages to the group, but we will not be responding to questions or comments posted there, so please post your questions in the Q&A. Before we introduce our guests, I want to make I want to thank two of my colleagues, ZOA Communications Manager Jackie Schaefer, who makes sure all of our ZOA online programming runs smoothly and professionally, and Steve Feldman, ZOA Executive Director of Greater Philadelphia, who will be helping me process questions. It's most appropriate that we host two very powerful, influential Israeli women on this day as we celebrate the unification of our holy city, capital of Jerusalem. And I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge and thank all the soldiers who have in the past and are now fighting for the safety and security of our beloved homeland and the soldiers' families who are forced by our enemies to endure the hell that is sending their children off to war. With no further ado, here to properly introduce our guest is someone many of you already know very well. He's a very close personal friend, one of my mentors here at COA, one of the most ardent, passionate Zionists I've ever met, and a former deputy director of ZOA, to introduce our guest, Howard Katzoff. Thank you, Alan. This really, truly is an honor. Uh, I'm just going to begin, and I'm not a rabbi, but I'm going to just begin very quickly and say that in our Torah and Vayikra, in the past few weeks that we read, God says, I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan. And he says, I will remember my covenant with Yaakov, Jacob, with Yitzchak, Isaac, and with Abraham, Abraham, and I will remember the land. And our guest speakers today have certainly followed God's words. Daniela Weiss and Lital Slonim are both truly Eshet Chayil, women of valor, filled with joy and pride about what they have accomplished and who lead the Nahala movement, a Zionist grassroots movement who loves the land of Israel. And it is showing the way for pioneering enterprises like land purchase, building new communities, instructing youth in agriculture and building skills, which are very, very necessary in all of what they do. Patty and I had the privilege of meeting with them several years ago and were so impressed with what their ongoing commitment to preserve and develop the land Israel's national lands in Judea and Samaria, Yehuda and Shomron. Daniela's parents, I hope you don't mind, Daniela, if I mention this, they came <laughs> to Israel as pioneers and they found themselves in the beautiful hills of Shomron in Samaria. Daniela's family, Daniela's family was among the first 10 families in Kedumim, the very first community in Samaria, in the yeah. Shomu. At first, she was a teacher, then a town council chairperson, then mayor, and now CEO of the Nahala movement, a successful national movement renewing like no other. I, I am going to, Daniela, please, Excuse me, but I have to tell the story about your grandchildren. <laughs> she tells a story about her grandchildren where they think they are going shopping with Savta Daniela. What do they wind up doing? They wind up on a new hill to settle. That's Daniela. What struck us, what struck Patty and I, was their positive vision and attitude about the future of the Jewish state. A quote from Daniela that I've read explains it all. Give me 24 hours and you'll see 10 new settlements, 10 new communities with 30 families in each. Right. And another one, as long as I breathe, I will fight for the land of Israel. Lital Slonim heads the public relations department 
and the foreign relations for Nahala. And she and Daniela are quite a team. Vital is focused on the illegal building activities by the Arabs who attempt to encroach on Area C. And no question, new Jewish communities are the only way to prevent this Arab presence on government lands. Many of you on our missions have seen the encroachment of the Arabs in those areas, even at the wall separating the Palestinian Arab uh, communities right outside Jerusalem, outside Jerusalem, and they're encroaching with apartment houses that lie empty. That's something that Lital is, is involved in. She is a ball of fire. Her enthusiasm is contagious, and she assists in educating the next generation to love Eretz Yisrael wherever she travels. While Daniela has been involved in establishing new communities in the past 50 years or so, Vital represents the new generation of prominent leaders in Judea and Samaria. I always express personally that we have lived through a golden age where we have seen the rebirth of the most remarkable Jewish state of Israel in our history. And we, when we hear these two Eshet Chayel today, we know that they have so much to do with assuring that this golden age will continue. Please understand that the opinions and objectives of our esteemed guests are theirs. And now it is my privilege and really an incredible pleasure to introduce Daniela Weiss and Lital Slonim to all of you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Harwood, Allen, Jackie, Steve, and all that amazing team and movement of the ZOA and uh, our good friend Morton as well that uh, cannot participate today. But I want to open with a, a big thank about the uh, cooperate and the friendship that the ZOA to Israel, to Judea and Samaria, to the settlement movement. And in every visit, in every mission, you are coming and visiting us in every time in new communities, new hilltop, uh, Aviatar even uh, the group uh, visited uh, two years ago. And uh, we do hope to see you all coming to Israel and continue this uh, cooperate and, and partnership and friendship. Um, so it's a, it's a big uh, privilege and we are thank you to the DOA about this opportunity to be here today. Now, I think that uh, our timing for this uh, webinar is amazing because like Alan mentioned, we are celebrating today Jerusalem Day, Yom Yerushalayim, uh, the beginning of the Six Day War. For me, it's more a kind of a history lesson for you, Daniela. You managed to, you, you had the privilege to lead to from hear. those time and uh, until uh, until today. But uh, today, this is a day that uh, we uh, return the, our nation and had the privilege to return to Yerushalayim and also to uh, the Gaza Strip uh, 50, 57 years ago. Am Israel, the Jewish nation in the Six Day War, returned. Uh, to many big regions and uh, meaningful regions of our land. And uh, it was a huge victory in six days, which influenced uh, immediately on, on all the existence of the Jewish state. Now, uh, we return, we return to the Gaza Strip, to Yerushalayim, to Judea and Samaria, to Sinai, to Ramat Golan. Uh, and it's very interesting because, because each and every one of those regions uh, those areas are represent uh, a different attitude, we can say. And uh, I think that uh, the best uh, uh, way to learn from the past, especially today when we are celebrating and mentioning the Six Day War and uh, all the process that come after this, is to learn from these uh, uh, examples. Now, uh, if uh, I will do a share screen, just uh, uh, we can all uh, see it together. You can see my screen, right? All right, good. So uh, here on the map, we can see um, in orange uh, the Jewish state before the Six Day War. We can see how it was, uh, it was limited, small. exactly, small. and small. And in purple, this is the huge achievement of the Six Day War. Uh, we can see here, right here in the middle, the heart of Israel 
uh, Judea and Samaria, we return to Ramat Golan uh, in the north and to the Gaza Strip over here and to uh, Sinai uh, Mountains. Um, this um, achievement, of course, uh, especially now when when we when we are now in a war that uh, uh, already a few months, so we know how huge this achievement was in six day, uh, such a young and and a small state uh, to achieve this uh, huge achievement. Now, if we will uh, take these uh, examples of um, of the different that the, the similar and the different in those areas, uh, we can look about the Gaza Strip and, and Sinai, uh, a huge area that we return in the Six Day War. In the and uh, there was um, in the beginning uh, there were new communities that were established in those areas, but unfortunately the government uh, in different stage decided to leave out uh, from this area because there was attitudes that said. If we will be out of the area, if we will give land uh, to the Arabs, uh, we will have a peace and quiet. Uh, now, uh, unfortunately, Israel tried this uh, a few times, and I think that the 7th of October uh, was a final proof that uh, this uh, issue is, uh, is failed. Uh, we know that in 2005, when Israel decided to destroy 22 communities that were in the Gaza Strip in Gush Katif. And the four communities in the northern part of Shamron, right? But in Gaza, we left, the army left, we uh, gave the Arab uh, totally control on this area. And uh, I, I remember, I remember Knesset members and ministers uh, promising us and committed to us that even if one rocket will shoot on Israel from the Gaza Strip, they will uh, go to a war. And unfortunately, from 2005, we got more than 30,000 rockets shooting on Israel. And in those 17 years, Israel and the army needed to go and enter to the Gaza Strip to fight more than 12 times in those 17 years that we left. Uh, and in each and every time that the army need to enter to the Gaza Strip, so many soldiers sacrifice their life for this. But And uh, we learn from these uh, examples that when when we are trying to bring peace and quiet and safety to Israel, this attitude of uh, uh, separate and not be in the area with no civil uh, uh, communities and no army, it, it's failed. Now, there is another model how to bring security and safety to Israel, which is uh, uh, something in the middle. Some people today, when we are talking about what will be the day after the war, the future of the Gaza Strip, yeah. some people are suggesting that Israel will have an army control, military control on the Gaza Strip. Now, this is something that Israel tried in the past, and not even America tried. Uh, Israel tried it in, in Lebanon, America tried it in Afghanistan, in Iraq. We know from the past, and we saw, we saw it time after time, that it's not possible to hold for long-term uh, military control because it's become very um, um, uh, complicated. Every time that uh, um, a car want to drive on the road, uh, he's under attack because there is no a lot of cars that are driving. So every small things become to be a, a big operation for the army. A, a lot of people... Uh, um, uh, killed and hurt, and then the pressure to leave is increasing. So we saw we saw from the past that the uh, attitude and the model of uh, we will bring security and safety to Israel through military uh, control also does not work. Now, if we will take the other parts in, that we we uh, return to them in the Six Day War, which is Judea and Samaria over here and the Golan Heights, uh, this is actually a good example how uh, in those places which we um, came there establishing communities. Today in Judea and Samaria, we have half a million Jews that living in uh, more than 250 different cities, township, um, different Yishuvim communities. Actually, actually well, oh, I think it is right, especially today on the day of the reunification <clears throat> of Jerusalem to mention that uh, we should include also the 300,000 Jews that live in the eastern neighborhoods of uh, Jerusalem. So altogether, uh, we see that in these areas that were liberated in the in the Six-Day War, it's already uh, close to a million Jews 
which is a huge number when we think that I came there uh, like we were 10 families and Rabbi Levinger was in Hebron at the, uh, the same time, I mean, a few years before. But what, what we can very clearly see, the big difference between a place where there is a massive Jewish presence and a place where they try to uh, put a massive military presence to no avail. Exactly, because we see today that in Judea and Samaria, that, uh, and if we look here on the map and we can see clearly how Judea and Samaria is uh, the shield that protects on all the center of Israel here, Tel Aviv, Ben Gurion, four miles distance from Judea and Samaria. So uh, yeah, today, Ben Gurion Airport, Ben Gurion Airport, of course, which is very close. So we can see here on on the map the distance, and after what's happened in the seventh of October, it's so clear that uh, the only reason that Judea and Samaria it's not uh, the second Gaza. It's because we have those communities and we have Jewish life and Jewish presence and we are uh, driving on the road. So the roads are open and they are safe. And even if we look on the Golan Heights, which uh, in, in the Golan, uh, in, in the Six Day War, uh, there were uh, more than uh, 130 um, uh, Syrian uh, citizens. But uh, after the war, Israel and send them to other uh, back to Syria and uh, in this situation today the Golan Heights are, is safe because we have Jewish population so we don't have uh, no one that they're uh, fighting uh, fighting on us uh, one of the, uh, the the strong example to this is Yudan Shomron and the Golan Heights that we see that in every place that we have Jewish life Jewish presence not only presence. military uh, control not only the army Jewish life create make the place to be safe and this is something that today people in Israel from Ranana from Kfar Saba uh, are more aware to this and they are coming to us and and thank us that we are actually protecting the center of Israel now uh, even if we will take two uh, main example uh, that was recently um one of the in 2021, there was an operation Shomer Homod. So the road between Dimona to Be'er Sheva was closed. Three days, the army couldn't drive on this road to bring uh, weapons and and uh, military uh, staff to the, the army base on the road. He needed to use airplanes because on uh, through this road, there is no Jewish communities, only Bedouin, and then they uh, block the road three days. We see a similar situation in the Vadi Ava. Vadi Ava. Uh, and and uh, the, the reason we were finally successful with the establishing of a new, <clears throat> new community of Yatar, which I believe most of our audience are aware of it, is that we managed to convince the government that without our Aviatar, we say our because it's achievement of Nahala movement, the road from the coastal plain to the Jordan Valley would be blocked in a few seconds. And uh, in spite of the fact that it's uh, quite forbidden uh, to, to establish new communities, we managed for a lot of... Uh, efforts, but also convincing this, that the strategic value of a place like Eviatar in the middle of Samaria uh, is uh, stronger than obligation not to establish new settlements. And this brings us to the situation now in Gaza. Yes, it, it's true that we see that the army are, and they understand very well the value of a Jewish settlement and how much it's helping them uh, to uh, have more control and to the ability to uh, bring security to the area. Now, uh, as Daniela mentioned, our movement Nahala dealings uh, from 2005 after the disengagement from uh, Gush Katif in the Gaza Strip and four communities in the north of Shomron, our movement leading by Daniela together with Rabbi Moshe Levinger uh, leading the flag of establishing new communities uh, in uh, Judea and Samaria. Uh, we are doing this uh, 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 for, through 
establishing new communities to bring more awareness and public support and political support, and also land redemption, which we are buying land exactly like the JNF did before establishing the state. So we are continuing this uh, mission now in Judea and Samaria, in the heart of Israel. And through the years, we learned that if you know to uh, act right, you can achieve and create actually change in the government policy. Here in the map that you see here on the screen, this is part of the newest issue beam. Through the year, we managed to establish uh, more than, uh, I think more than 70 uh, places only in the recent uh, 10 years, but this is the, the fresh one, the young one that uh, now in a, in a process. And one of the strong example, it's Aviatao. And you can see here on the picture, Aviatao, uh, like Daniela mentioned, in the heart of the Shomor near Tapuach Junction, was a huge achievement, and it was a, a, a big lesson how we together can create, help the government to fulfill this vision and to create uh, influence on the government policy. Because Aviatao were the communities that we established in one month we brought infrastructure. We what you see road. here, we, what you see here, is a a dream, a vision that became a reality. Because what you see this, when you see this beautiful uh, um, settlement or town community. Name, or community, whatever you choose to call it, uh, it was just a bare hill, just a rock, and see how beautiful in, in it, one man. We, we create this uh, amazing community to be flourishing and full of life. We pave road, we bought infrastructure. It was a home for 52 families. And we didn't also create effects uh, on the ground, not only create effects on the ground, we also brought more than 100,000 people from all over Israel and also from uh, all over the world to come and to visit. And we actually create a public support that encouraged the government and the leadership in Israel after 20 years that uh, there was a commitment of the government not to establish new communities in Judea and Samaria and not to recognize and new communities in Judea and Samaria. After 20 years, Aviatao created a situation that the government decided to recognize this as, as a, a place. And it's, it happened when we want to actually create a different, uh, to lead the, the policy of the government, we need to combine those three main things. We need to be able to create strong facts on the ground, but to combine this with public support from Jewish in, the, in Israel, but also from Jews all over the world. And this is why the work that you're doing in the ZOA, together with more organization in different countries, it's so important because when the leadership see the support that the Jewish nation ha, um, uh, giving to the settlement movement, to the communities, it's something that encourages them and helps them to lead this uh, idea. Now, when we are now uh, taking those uh, experience from you, that, this experience from Judea and Samaria, and we want to learn from this and to uh, to bring the vision and the goal to returning to settle the Gaza Strip. I mean, um, there is a basic uh, fact that uh, the Jewish uh, nation had uh, th uh, 3,000 years of present in the Gaza uh, city and in the Gaza Strip until the massacres in 1929. And uh, uh, we know that the, the Gaza Strip is part of the, um, the land that was uh, belonged to uh, Judea that, that, uh, from the 12 tribes. Uh, uh, so we know- Shabbat Yehuda, the tribe yeah, of Yehuda. The tribe of Yehuda. So except from uh, that we know that Aza is part of our homeland and except of the strong roots and history, Jewish history that we have so for thousands of years in, in the Gaza Strip, Today, we learn and we, we understand after the 7th of October that we don't have any other option. If we want that the people in Sderot, the people in Ashkelon, will be able to uh, live uh, confidence and peacefully, this is the only way. You know, um, we can say that from the village, the Arab village, El Majdel, today, which is uh, which was in the, um, not far from the Gaza Strip, we don't have any uh, Hamas terrorists that attacking us. And the only reason that from this El Majdel village, we don't have uh, Hamas that are attacking us, it's because today on this village, there is a big city calling Ashkelon. 
And we know that from the village is Dud, we don't have any rockets shooting on us because on this village today, we have the city of Ashdod. And we know, we, we know that even Tel Aviv University uh, sitting on a village of Sheikh Muniz, we know that in every place that we have Jewish life, like we did in all our uh, in all the rest of our country, we have safe when we have Jewish life and then we have uh, uh, army control. And then we know that the only way, like we uh, did in Judea and Samaria, the only way that the kibbutzim uh, near the Gaza Strip and Sderot and Ashkelon and, and all the people there will be able to live uh, peacefully and with confidence that the 7th of October will not happen again, it's if we will resettle the Gaza Strip. Now, it's something that in the beginning, when the, when the war started and we started to talk about this, uh, we can say that uh, not so many people had the courage to join, but we see now the soldiers that are fighting in Gaza and so many of them are calling us and sending us message and in touch with us and asking from us, please make sure that we are not fighting in vain, but uh, let, let's uh, translate to those of our uh, of the spectators <clears throat> who do not uh, uh, understand the the words um, in this picture. Yes, Gush Katif, we are back. Uh, uh, what do these soldiers say? The soldiers say uh, we are the army of the Jewish nation. We will not took our, uh, off our uniform until we will uh, destroy the enemy and uh, in, in the Gaza Strip. One of the things that we see that as long as the war is continue and all uh, we see that more and more people, soldiers and the public in Israel, uh, more people realize that the only way to finish this, because even now Hamas continue to shoot rockets on Israel. Now, when the army is there fighting, we still have rockets shooting on the road. So this is something that uh, people, and we can see it in Israel, for example, in this, uh, uh, you can see uh, this was from the Mamash one month after the uh, war started. Already uh, in Israel, more than 44% were, were um, in the idea of resettle the Gaza Strip. After this, we can see it's growing to 68%, 68%. and these numbers are growing all the time. And we understand that we need to show the leadership, the government, that they have the backup from the people to resettle the Gaza Strip. Now, the map that you are seeing here on the screen, this is the map that's showing the Gaza Strip. You see the yellow line here. This is the border of the Gaza Strip. This is the Rot, Ashkelon, the Kibbutzim, Be'eri, and near all the man, uh, all of this area is full of kibbutzim, and this map is showing uh, our garinim, our groups of families. More than five hundred families are registered, and those numbers are growing all the time to resettle the Gaza Strip. Those families, and you can see each and every one has a name already, and they are and they chose a specific area uh, from a history aspect and security aspect, and some, some of them want to live close to the beach, which is also fine. But we see that this demanding and movement of the idea of resettled the Gaza Strip is growing all over Israel. We are, every week we're going, we travel in, from city to city in Israel, meeting with people, and people are coming to us and asking from us, continue and don't give up because this is the only way to bring back uh, safety. Now, uh, through this month of the war, our movement Nahala organized a few big events to um, bring a on the stage this uh, demand and will of um, many uh, people from the Israeli public of resettling the Gaza Strip. So we did the event in the beginning, uh, two months after the war started, we did an event in Ashdod, Ashdod then. and then in Givat Washington. Uh, three months ago, we did a huge uh, rally in Binyanea Uma in the main hall in Jerusalem. We bought, a, we can say, almost half of the government was participating in this. The ministers. Ten ministers. Mi ten ministers and 20, 20 Knesset members participating in this event, stood on this stage and demanding to resettle the Gaza Strip. Now, in Independence Day, which we are just celebrate. Uh, we brought the Halab movement organized a huge march in uh, from the road, 
uh, uh, finishing when we are watching and looking toward the Gaza Strip. And we brought more than 50,000 people that came and the demand from the government and also ministers, ministers participate in this and Knesset members and different figures and rabbis. And uh, but 50,000 people came in Independence Day to Sderot when Sderot is under attack of rockets are shooting from the Gaza Strip to Sderot. And they came there demanding from the government to reset the Gaza Strip. So in your permission, I want to show you a short video clip and we will continue. From the march. אלפי הצועדים כאן היום מצביעים ברגליים ומעמידים חזון ברור. עזה היא חלק מנחלת אבותינו. לא, ששוחרר, שוחרר וייושב מיידית. התיישבות מביאה את יכול לשדרות, לכל הדרום, לכל מדינת ישראל, ושלום לעולם כולו. להיות עם חופשי בארצנו, זה גם לדעת להגיד לביידן, אדוני הנשיא, זה שלנו, אנחנו חוזרים הביתה לעזה, עלינו ליישב את עזה. בכוחות ביטחון ומתיישבים שיעצבו אותם ואת הארץ הזאת באהבה. כמה שיותר לייהד אזור מביא יותר עומק אסטרטגי, מביא יותר רגשמת חיים, דוחף את האויב יותר אחורה. הדרך לניצחון ולהשבת החטופים היא אחת. התיישבות יהודית בחבל עזה, לתמיד. מי שלא יכול לראות יהודים בגוש קטיף, לא יכול לראות יהודים בשדרות, לא יכול לראות יהודים בתל אביב, וגם לא בפלורידה. כבר עכשיו ישנם שישה גרעיני התיישבות חדשים, ובהם מאות משפחות המוכנות בכל רגע נתון לעלות ולהתיישב בחבל עזה. אנחנו מוכנים מיידית לעלייה לקרקע. תנו לנו ליישב את כל חבל עזה. שקט בשדרות יהיה רק כאשר נכבוש וניישב את עזה. זו התשובה הכי טובה לרשעים הארורים האלה בעזה. שליטה מלאה ברצועת עזה. לא גוש קטיף, חמש ערים גדולות צריכות להיבנות כאן במרחב. בלי התיישבות אין ביטחון. איפה שאין התיישבות אין צבא. ואיפה שאין צבא יש חמאס. את האויב שלנו שמקדש ומפאר את המוות והדם לא מעניין כמה מחבלים מהארגון שלו חוסקו עבורו לחיים אין משמעות אבל אם הוא יאבד שטח הוא יבין שטרור מוביל להפסד. שבעה חודשים כבר חיילי צבא ההגנה לישראל מוכיחים שאנחנו מוכנים לרשת את חבל הדרום, את חבל עזה. צריך להגיד תודה לאנשים האלה, לאנשים היפים האלה, שבאים ועוד מוכנים ללכת להתיישב בלב עזה. תודה רבה לכם וכל הכבוד. כל העם איתכם. So uh, this march was a, a huge uh, success on, on, on the day of independence, day of independence 50,000 people. Now, I'm sure that some of you asking themselves now when you hear us talking about reset of the Gaza Strip, what the chance of this vision uh, to succeed? Now, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, when we speak about Judea and Samaria, so for me, it's uh, I can enjoy and read and learn from history, but Daniela, please share with us from your experience as a, a women that lead the Gush Emunim movement that uh, started the settlement in Judea and Samaria, which was against all chances, against uh, the world was against it, and no one succeed, uh, thought that you will succeed. And today we said we have almost a million Jews. So from your experience. Okay, so I would like to, uh, to tell you, dear friends, that actually, there is a very tight link between you, the ZOA, you say that ZOA, I used to say ZOA, <clears throat> and the renewal of Jewish settlement in Samaria. Some of you, the older ones, uh, remember 
that the UN arrived at a very at a terrible uh, resolution, which said that uh, Zionism is racism. And uh, what happened at that time? It was in the middle of the year 1975. Yes, as Lital said, I can tell stories from many years ago. From experience. From experience. And uh, this really uh, story creates the common denominator between you and, I mean, the, you Jews in the United States and we settlers in uh, in the liberate, liberated areas. And as Lital mentioned, so uh, uh, with so much vision and, uh, and faith, our future resettling of the Gaza Strip. After this, the terrible uh, resolution of the UN, uh, uh, an, uh, a delegation of uh, Jewish organizations from the, the United States, Canada, and England, a delegation came to Israel. Now, uh, the the it so happened that at that time we were in our eighth attempt to settle, to establish a new Jewish, first new Jewish settlement in Samaria. Now I, I'm speaking about Hanukkah, Tav Shin Lamedvav, the December 1975. Now I want you to know, we are now, uh, uh, we have a meeting, I think more than a hundred people are yes. participating. And I want you to know that it was a historical uh, moment. Uh, I am a believer. Uh, I am a Dati person, a person religious. of uh, religious, or called person of emuna, and I really believe that it was God's direction, direct direction, instruction to bring you from the United States to help us when we were in our tiny tents on the Black Mountains of Samaria without any Jewish settlement yet on these historical mountains, the birthplace of the Jewish nation. Now you came as a delegation and you came, to, you went to the Knesset and you tried and you succeeded in persuading, it was Rabin's government. Shimon Peres was minister of defense and you managed to convince the government to let us stay on a bare hill on the mountains of Samaria. That was the beginning of Jewish resettling, settling the mountains, the biblical mountains of Samaria. I want you to know, you also visited us and I remember you. I'm speaking to you as an organization as, and as delegates, uh, an organization as and as people who are the closest to the idea of settling the biblical areas of Judea and Samaria. You came to us. You were elegant with your ties, with your jackets, with your suits. Uh, you were clean. We were covered with dust. And uh, there was such a, 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 a just a juxtaposition, such a conflict, such a strange uh, difference between the way I looked and you looked. And this special meeting with between the people of from the big world, Jews from the big world, and us settlers, like we were like biblical figures on the, on the biblical mountains. And uh, this yielded, this gave life to new era, to the first Jewish settlement, and as Elital mentioned before, I thank God I managed to be with my husband and with our two little daughters. The, uh, we were one of the first 10 families to renew Jewish life in Jewish settlements, Jewish life in Samaria. I take this from, from uh, 50 years ago to now. And I say it is the, the bond, the link, the, the loyalty between you between Jews in the world, and I would love you all to be in Israel, but I know that the situation is different, that you are in the United States. Those of you who want to come are more than welcome, but as long as this is the situation, 
your work for the Jewish nation and your work for Judea and Samaria and now for Gaza is the thing that will make the difference. Your support is of value. And this is why I wouldn't want to use any diminishing uh, definition for your for the contribution of the ZOA to the strength of Israel. And you are at a moment of test. And at this moment, you can you can make a big difference. I would like also to relate to an issue that Lital mentioned uh, briefly before, and I would like to add a point, a certain point to it or a certain aspect. I want you to know that we are being, Lital and myself and our colleagues from Nahala, we are being threatened not to touch the issue of the day after the war in Gaza. Don't deal with it. It will uh, cause friction, disagreement within, inside the, 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 the Israeli uh, society. I want you to know what the, the examples that Lital just uh, showed on the, on the screen before are tiny examples from a huge awakening and call of, of soldiers time and again and again and again. Please, we don't fight in vain. We fight in order for this area to be re uh, re-established, re rebuilt by Jewish communities. So we are not causing any friction. We uh, follow the, the the demand, the even the, the 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 begging sometimes of soldiers. Please come uh, establish settlements where we fought and finally liberated. And I want to add to it. When people say to me, and people say to me very often when we are when I'm being interviewed on the different channels in Israel and abroad, why not wait? Why not wait? Wait, wait, not now. Let, let the soldiers first finish their work and then you do your work. I say, no, 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 no. Had I known that everybody keeps quiet, I would have kept quiet too. But everybody is working. The United States is working on it. I mean, on what will be the day after? The different Arab countries around us are working on it. The left in Israel and also abroad are working on it. What will be the day after? And what are the ideas that are being cooked about, uh, about uh, Gaza? That maybe there will be found some kind of new structure of government, maybe a, an improvised or bettered a Palestinian Authority government, which is nonsense. You know why there are no elections in in Judea and Samaria for, for the Palestinian Authority? Because they know that the Hamas will win. So speaking about uh, gov government of P Palestinian Authority in Gaza is total distortion and total uh, uh, Ignorance, or uh, it, maybe it's not it, it's not the ignorance, but closing one's eyes to the truth, and this is why we do insist on speaking now about the real future of Gaza. The future will be Jewish settlements, and here I here I want to add from my experience, as as there are many many now, thank God, many. Uh, army bases, uh, military bases in, in Gaza. We can start as we did in Samaria and Judea. Rabbi Levinger started from the military base in Hebron. I started from the military base in Samaria. And so many other places that you know, like Bet El, like Shabbat Shomron, like Adorain, like uh, Nevet Suf, uh, um, uh, El Kana, and many places that you know. So we believe that we can start from places that are now uh, military bases, and I want to add to it. And I saw uh, Lital just mentioned that we organized a big rally in Jerusalem and the big march in uh, in Sderot with many ministers and members of Knesset. In the first months after the war, uh, people uh, did not use the word settling, uh, the, the expression settling uh, Gaza. But now, step by step by step, 
they do mention it because they see that to put the Palestinian Authority as government of Gaza is something uh, dangerous and uh, not realistic. So all in all, what becomes the most realistic thing is to, I call it, copy paste what we did in Samaria. And in the and, Golan Heights. And in the Golan Heights. And do the same in the Gaza area. And uh, I believe that with the experience that we have accumulated in Judea and Samaria and the Golan, as you mentioned, and with the success that we had, with hundreds of communities, with, with big cities like, like Ariel, Male Adomim, Beitar, and so on and so forth. Uh, after th the experience that we have acquired, we can do the same thing and even uh, to some extent, uh, if we take into consideration the difficulties, we can take this experience of the past and also of, of pioneers from the beginning of Israel. But I'm speaking about my experience now. 50 years of being involved in, in establishing settlements, I know how to do it. And it's no wonder, as Vital just mentioned, that hundreds of families have already enrolled in order to establish new communities in Samaria. And I want to finish what I wanted to say to you at this point, that uh, we often, Lital, uh, when she, she speaks, when I speak, we mention leaders of Israel, like Golda Meir, for instance, who came to the United States and said that she, that we, the Jewish nation, or the Jewish people who live in Israel, have our mi mi miraculous uh, uh, password, shall I put it this way. We don't have any choice but to win. And I'm telling you here, and listen to me and remember the day, it will not be hard for you to remember the day because it's the day of the reunification of Jerusalem. Remember, as we do not have any choice but to live in Gaza, we will live in Gaza, we will establish communities in Gaza because we cannot leave the monsters that committed the massacre of Simchat Torah and they say they want to do the same thing again, we will not let them stay. The world will the nil The world will have to take them as they took people from Afghanistan, from Syria, and as all wars created people who move to one place to the other, the Arabs will go and Jews will return to the area of the tribe of Yehuda. So before we will take questions uh, with Alan and Howard and Steve, I just uh, want to say, like Daniela mentioned, that we are value very much the friendship of the ZOA. And uh, part of uh, the thing that we are uh, show, it's so important that each and every one of us can be ambassador these ideas and to speak about it, especially in our modern days when we have social media. So each and every one of us can show his opinion and show his support about this uh, idea of resettle the Gaza Strip. And also, um, we usually don't do it, but because we, like I said, uh, value the friendship, if some of you want uh, the maps that uh, we show uh, to have the knowledge, the maps of Israel, uh, the distance between Judea and Samaria and the Gaza Strip to the main cities. So you can screen this barcode and you will get all the maps, uh, ma different maps of Israel. You can get this set to your and email. The, and it's important uh, to have this. Yeah, the Gaza uh, maps, you will get all of the full picture because each and every one of us need to be ambassador to this. And this is why it's important. I will put also a link uh, in the chat. Uh, it's important that each and every one of you will know the details and you will have the maps and you will know to exactly where is uh, Gaza, where is Judea and Samaria, what the distance, what the values, where we have a Jewish settlement. So this is uh, something that usually we are not sharing those maps, but we said, for our good friend in uh, the ZOA, we do happy to share with you those maps uh, so you can use it to uh, be ambassador to this vision. So you have this barcode here and I will share the, um, uh, the link in the chat. So which, uh, who of you that want to have the map and the, uh, the data and the numbers, uh, you can take this. And uh, if you have uh, questions, so uh, we will be happy to answer. Well, first, Daniela and Lita, let me thank you. Your passion, your knowledge, 
your um, professionalism. What you shared with us today was absolutely incredible. Now, you recognized our relationship between ZOA and the Nahala movement dates back well before my time, but certainly in the time that I've been traveling to Israel, we've always been cooperative in Lital. You've joined us to so many of our events and we yeah. are kindred spirits in so many ways. I think we're going to go over a little bit, if that's okay with you. I want to take one minute just to tell people online what we're doing here at ZOA just quickly. I always do that at a webinar, so give me one minute and then we'll get to one or two important questions. Um, we hosted a very large group of participants in the Israel Day Parade this past Sunday. We were joined by several members of our ZOA campus staff from across the country. We we're proud to march with so many of you. You know, there are 100,000 people, Ital and Daniela, that came out to, to support Israel this past Sunday in New York. And a few weeks ago, we hosted a very successful Yom HaZikron and Yom HaAtzmut rally in Times Square, attended by several hundred people. President, uh, ZOA President Mark Klein gave a fiery speech. We danced and sang in celebration of Israel well into the night. The school year is basically over, but our ZOA campus staff is hard at work planning for next year. We're looking for a few more ZOA fellows. So if anybody knows a college student with a strong passion for supporting Israel, let us know or visit our campus.zoa.org. Navigate to the paid ZOA fellowship page under events and opportunities and let them apply. Our government relations under the direction of Dan Pollock was heavily involved in helping two legislations pass in the House recently, one sanctioning the ICC for horrific unfairly prosecuting Israel, the other uh, to undo the limits on aid to Israel by the Biden administration, uh, both decisions demonstrating very broad support for Israel in Congress, nice to see. Uh, and ZOA Center for Law and Justice under the direction of Susan Tuckman has been providing information to the House Committee on Education and the Workforce as it investigates anti-Semitism on, on campuses uh, and in K through 12 and for Danielle and Lital and your Israeli friends, Anti-Semitism here in the States is off the charts. We really have a big fight. Uh, but we recently heard from a staffer for committee chair, Congresswoman Virginia Fox, that COA's Title IX, Title VI complaint against Montgomery County Public Schools was the basis for a large part of their pre-hearing briefings, uh, briefing materials that they sent to the committee. And of course, ZOA National President Mark Klein continues to travel across the country, appearing in person and on television and in print media as the sole strongest voice advocating for Israel's rights and obligations to completely destroy Hamas and secure Israel's northern borders, calling out the malign hostile actions of the Biden administration towards uh, Israel. Uh, visit our website, zoa.org, sign, sign up to receive our uh, newsletters uh, or to stay informed. And while you're there, keep in mind that ZOA's work here in the United States tangibly helps Israel and please generously support our work with an online donation. Let's get back to the program. <clears throat> Danielle and Latel, you, you shared with uh, the audience that we have a longstanding, a longstanding relationship. Um, and I do want to inform the audience, though, that at this point, ZOA has not taken a final position on the disposition of Gaza after the war. We reserve the right to do so in the future. Um, it's not a stretch, and, and I think you mentioned this, uh, Daniela, that uh, Nahua advocating for repopulation of Gaza isn't that big of a stretch. I, I, my information is right. Uh, Gaza was assigned to the tribe of Judah. So you're already yeah. fighting for Judah and Samaria. And you know that I have family on both. And thank you for everything that you're doing. I'm going to ask you one or two hard questions because we are tight for time. The left-wing media in the United States feeds, um, feeds us information that we know to be untrue and is very difficult to navigate. I know from my family that the media in Israel also does the same. So we don't know what to believe. You showed us a beautiful video about 50,000 people demonstrating for the support uh, of Gaza, repopulating Gaza. Um, but before, before Gaza, we saw a lot of uh, videos about protesters for uh, against uh, legal reform. And now we see people you know, saying that, that, that Bibi is, is responsible, has to bring the hostages home. So given that, given that, bias in the media. Can you tell us across Israel, what percentage of Israelis would support your plan to repopulate Gaza with Jewish inhabitants? You just showed it on the on the screen oh. before. And what would that be? Uh, when we started speaking about it, it was like 30, 40 percent. No, a month after the war, there was more than 44 
uh, percent, the majority, it was a majority and I can show it again, but uh, recently there was a, a, another one and it was a 68% and those numbers are increasing and growing all the time, <clears throat> mainly because people that in the beginning of the war, they, they thought, oh, we, we might have an option to leave and not to stay there or maybe only to leave the army. But I want you to understand, to all of us, to, to realize that right now, when we have soldiers inside the Gaza Strip fighting, the Hamas is still shooting on us rockets. And in the place, in the road, that we went, when we brought 50,000 people, uh, there was rockets that uh, shoot a, a day after. Now, people open their eyes and they see if now, even now, when uh, the army is there, Hamas still have the ability to shoot rockets on us, the only way to stop, and they are already saying that they will do the 7th of October again. They will prepare and they will attack again. So when, when like uh, the, the famous sentence, if it walks like a duck and it looks like a duck, it is a duck. I mean, we know that they are not playing. And when they, when, when the Arab are saying that they will fight until, uh, uh, because they want to kill us all and they want to uh, destroy the Jewish state, and they're saying we will not stop only uh, in this uh, region of Israel. They are talking they on were Tel planning, Aviv. They were planning in the attack uh, on the 7th of <clears> October, <throat> they were planning to actually to cut the country into two. Uh, the plan have, plans haven't changed. I want to add one element that when people on the media or in the different political debates, they present the ideas of uh, uh, of refined Palestinian authority, then everybody, I mean, uh, either laughs or hides his uh, uh, inner uh, inner criticism because how can you change uh, an authority that they they do not do the basic democratic democratic act of elections because they are afraid of the elections being won by Hamas. So every and and the other uh, options, international power, like uh, in Lebanon, where we have the problem with with Hezbollah, or to to trust the Arab uh, uh, countries that the United States doesn't trust, that Europe doesn't trust. So what happens is that even if the beginning Gaza seems to frighten. I think it's main, main, mainly because of ignorance. Uh, because if we know the history of Gaza, there have always been Jewish communities in Gaza. And so, we have to leave Gaza because of uh, the threat of a massacre there. So actually, we are left, the Jewish nation is left with the one logical Zionistic answer. Settlement and security go hand in hand. And let me more, let more me people understand it. Let me ask you a two part question because I didn't hear it in the presentation, and I'm sure that our audience is thinking about it. In fact, there's a question about it. So two questions: um, security for Jews when they repopulate Gaza, and what is the plan for the Arab inhabitants right now? As Elital mentioned it before, and uh, we we are both, as I mentioned, we are both pioneers. We live in the heart, uh, I live in the heart of Samaria, Lita lives in the heart of the Binyamin Mountains. Uh, you know what, what gives security to, to us? That uh, when we, uh, there is a, it's a kind of joke, one would say that we, we like open the road for the army because the, 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 the officers who sees Lital going through the curves of the mountains of Benjamin, they say, now we are secure. Right. She opened the road. So it's the, the citizens that give security to the army, and it's the citizens who give re a reason, a good reason to the army to stay there. Army does not stay if there are no citizens. It's a, it's a theoretical thing that never succeeded. That was the first question. The, the second quest, question was, first was about security, ah, about uh, the inhabitants. Uh, people move in wars from place to place. Now Egypt doesn't want uh, the Gazans 
uh, uh, Erdogan doesn't want them. But, but there is other countries like, that already said uh, and declared that they, that they will accept. accept. Scotland said that Canada, and also now in the war between Russia and to Ukraine, you know, in the first 10 days in this war, <clears throat> more than 1.5 million uh, refugees left Ukraine uh, to different countries in 10 days. And we are talking now in our times, not in the past. In every war, there is refugees. And the world, always, in every world, the world calling to all the countries to open their gate and to accept refugees, except one case, when it's Israel, when it's in, in the Jewish nation, the world forbidden and, and closed the gate and, not, and does not let to Arabs that want to live and go to have better life in other countries. So we say now the world want to improve the Arabs' life and to invest let, billions to, it, to build it. for them a future. Take this money, those countries that want to support the Arabs at, uh, uh, in Gaza, support them by encourage other countries that already, and many of them already ex uh, uh, publicized and declare that they will open their gate and will accept. If we will give them financial motivate, they will accept them. So we need to be strong enough as a nation and to say, like in every war, there is refugee, and also here the world will open the gate and let the Arabs that want to live to live, and we will help them and encourage this. So I'm going to ask you a two-part question. I think we'll end with that because it's after two o'clock. But what I'd like to understand is this. Um, if you visit our website, you'll see that we post a Biden hostile to Israel watch list. Um, more constantly writes uh, op-eds calling, calling to task uh, the hostile administration, it, current hostile, hostile administration. But the reality is that the U.S. and Israel have a beautiful relationship over, over a long time, and we have to regenerate that. Um, and the plan that you're, that you're offering now for resettling um, certainly will cause some consternation, both in the United States and in the U.N. and the world court. How do you navigate that, Daniela and Lital, if you go ahead with your plan and the sentiment is against what you're doing. No, there is no chance it will be against us because there is no chance to leave monsters <clears throat> in the gate of Israel. It, let's make it clear. It will not remain as it was until the 7th of October. Write it down, make a note, remember, no chance for the Gaza people to to operate at the same thing again, never again. So you and us together and have our we and we have influence. And I'm speaking to you as a person. I'm speaking to you now as a person who changed history. So trust me, if I am telling you that Gaza will not be the same as it was till the 7th of October, you'll have to trust me. And if I say to you, help us, I mean it. Help us, and we will succeed. Also, we know that. Uh, also, we know, and we see that this is actually the natural process that uh, uh, should be. It was in the past uh, from the independence uh, war when we established the state, um, uh, through the Six Day War, which we are mentioning today, and uh, coming until uh, mm. and now that we learned that the seventh of October. We promise, you know, after the Holocaust, the Jewish nation promised themselves that this will not happen again. Now, the 7th of October was uh, shocking enough and terrible enough for us to commit it to the next generation, to my children. If we want to sleep in our beds quietly, knowing that this will not happen again, we this is the only way that we can ensure this through settling the Gaza Strip. And this is why, we, like Daniela said, we have only one option. We have to win. And we will. God bless you. Listen, <clears throat> your passion, your strength, your accomplishments are, are, are amazing to us. We wish you the best always. Uh, we pray for the safety of all the soldiers that are defending Israel. Um, we pray for the uh, avenging of blood that was that was lost on October 7th. We hope that you'll come back and join us. We wish you all the best success. And uh, we look forward to the next time that we get to be together with you. If you'd like one closing statement, go right ahead. And and uh, I want to say, like, uh, when you are coming into Israel, please 
as part of a delegation of the ZOA, or if you come privately, please come visit us in those young communities in Judea and Samaria. Come and, 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 be, and the Gaza, please God. But come and visit and be part of this new spirit of Pioneers Model 2024, which we have today in Judea and Samaria, and please God, in the Gaza Strip. Alan and Howard and all the dead away. Thank you very much to this. And we are looking forward to host you here in Israel. Jackie and all a kavod lachem. All a kavod. God bless you both. And this ends the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you very You're much. You're most welcome. See you in Israel.